Hello everyone. Um, we're going to continue on with my testimony. Uh, if you did not catch the last video, we landed in court. Uh, we're here. It's the court day. And now we're going to go into, as my mind allows me to remember, um, and I hope everything. Uh, where even I may even paint a picture for you to see what things was like um, where my mind was at um, and everything so we're gonna go into it um, I may even bring you after court and carry you all the way up to July um, late July and at this point the reason why I'm telling you this because I'm ready to go ahead and give you guys some 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 even though this has been good in my testimony um there's so much more that happened where well, i would say the worst to come happened um when now i'm fighting for custody so in just stay with me january of 2020 january the 10th to be exact between that time and late july I am now in a position not of my not of my own doing in no way I'm talking about zero percent of my own doing but I'm in a position where I can get my daughter what happened right you got to stay tuned so we're in court um, I'm sitting there I'm waiting um, my lawyers there but lawyers do lawyer things um, and I'm just waiting. The courtroom is crowded, um, as you can um, uh, imagine. And in the back, like I mentioned before, um, there is these this glass wall where people go in the back. And I guess this is a go-between where people can still get things resolved without going before the judge. Uh, which, of course, at that point, everything will be finalized um, and a judgment will be made. Um, so we at some point we do get called back um, we go back there and so while we're there you know, of course you know um, the, for me um, I won't say surprise but I wasn't I won't say I was surprised but I still had that feeling of I really didn't like the person who's um, addressing or the case, you know the way you know the way they handle the non-custodial parent is almost like it is like how they make you feel like, hey, you're nothing. Show us the money, um, X, Y, Z, and, and and that's that's just transparency, okay? That's how it is. You realize it's about the money, primarily, yes, um, but. No surprise, but I still didn't like how it felt. Um, but of course, the finances is not a is not something we hadn't addressed before. Remember back with the mediation, I had already said yes to um, whatever um, the child support, whatever she wanted. So, of course, they established um, child you know the child support. They're trying to figure out the numbers, and so something very critical came up. Right? Um, of course, they're talking about. Oh, this was something great too. They talking about like health care. And I thank God for my wife who did not have to because she has nothing to do with this in the aspect. She didn't bring this. Um, this was on me, but she allowed it, which actually um, made the blow a little lighter um, where the state of Texas really couldn't come after me um dealing with health care um, because my wife uh, was putting my daughter on her health care and so that was a, a big relief just there because I'm trying to tell you they coming for you okay state of Texas is a state you don't want to have to deal with okay as a non-custodial parent I, I say that you don't want to you don't want to you want your case to be somewhere else <laughs> not in the state of Texas but anyway um, it is what it is. So what came up is the time period. Because so basically the mom got asked, which was no surprise, um, do she want retroactive pay? 
And of course, she said yes. Okay. Now, I want you guys to remember this for future. It, it's, it's nothing wrong with mom wanting retroactive pay. But there is something wrong that mom put up a fight because what they said her retroactive pay should be, she denied it initially. She want to go before the judge. The reason that's important is people later on, they act like everything is about money for me. When their actions, oh, she was there with her mom too. Let me establish that. Uh, you could say she had a little backup with her. Um, and I don't mean that in a disrespectful way, but you guys will have to hear about how this family roll. It gets ugly and it gets dirty. And uh, thank God for being um, the one who give us wisdom um, because we lack so much of it. I'm serious. Anyway, let's just stay here. So when the, when she said yes to the retroactive pay, um, they established what it would be. She denied it. And so now we got to go. And also, I think this happened at the first one. When she said that she, how old the child was and, and so forth, it came back to me that, wait, so I'm just mentioning it to my lawyer. I didn't know. But I say she haven't always had her. Um, because she lost custody of her. So while she was trying to um, grab retroactive for the, my daughter's full life term, I know today, which she still lied about how long she hadn't had her. Y'all, it was months, months that she did not have her daughter in her care. Okay, but she wanted retroactive pay for that period or whatever. So my lawyer, um, when I mentioned it to her, she wound up asking her and she stalled on letting her know, let my lawyer know how long it was. So my lawyer let her know, I can go pull up, you know, it's going to take a little longer, but I can go pull up the paperwork, you know, and uh, figure it out. So she threw out a number how long it was. And, you know, I know she lied that day, um, whatever she said, because in time we find out so much more uh, about was what, what was going on down there. But um, and that right there is only what's fair. Okay, that's what that is. That's, you shouldn't try to recuperate finances for a period where. Remember now, you, you she come off as this do all thing right, can't do no wrong, mom. But you had already lost, or as she would say, she gave up custody of her child for a time period. And what was the motivation behind that? Well, I know today, which I, I would just put it out there. I know today, a uh, 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 mental ward, okay? And and what still that? I, I speak with confidence, drugs. <laughs> I speak with confidence, drugs. Um, drug usage. Um, the people that she hung around and dealt with, right? So, and the reason why I can speak this with confidence, because even though I'm not going to get into it now, her later court date, um, now she was willing to give up this information to be the case. Ooh. Oh, some of y'all paying attention. Okay. Yeah. Now she, listen, when you need to be the case, now you're willing to give up everything about yourself if it's going to help you beat your case. And so, yeah, that's, that's how I know with confidence she was in a mental ward. Okay. Coming back to this day. That was some future stuff there, y'all. Um, that I wasn't privy to at the time. Um, but it also points to how this family deal. How they deal. They deal dirty. They act like they've done no wrong. They ain't wearing about a dollar. Boom. But everything they've done is calculated. It's manipulation. Yes. We've already established. I should. Th this situation should never be anyway. So we're past that. The child is here. My daughter's here. Boom. We we're at where we at now. Why are games still being played? Because this is how they deal. Anyway. 
I go back inside the courtroom and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and they go out and at some point my lawyer come back to me now what I did not know is that at some point I guess my lawyer went out there where her and her mom was at and spoke with them or something but I just know while I'm sitting there just waiting to go before the judge at this point you know I know I'm doomed <laughs> yeah I know I'm doomed um, they're willing to accept she's now willing to accept the retroactive pay that has been mentioned that she's going to get and so everything is right pretty much we get everything wrapped up now when we leave out the courtroom her mom this is very important to remember too because what she said doesn't mean it doesn't carry the weight of what she said in future time her mom lets me know that she's been taking care of my daughter all this time. Now, I'm going to tell you guys this right now. I, it's just like I just feel like I have to. The mom says she's been taking care of her all this time. The grandma says she's been taking care of her all this time. And in the future of this testimony, there's an auntie who says she's been taking care of her all this time. It was as if this child was in three places at one time. I'm, being, <laughs> I'm trying to... <laughs> I'm trying to tell you all. This is not a, a situation of where the child was with mom, but everybody's saying that they was contributing to the household. No, I'm talking about everybody took a claim like they had my daughter in their possession and was raising her. That's, that's what I'm trying to tell you. It's crazy. But anyway, back to this particular day. The mom says to me, she's been taking care of my child all this time. It's my turn. You know, pretty much I need to step up. As a dad, do what I got to do. And I'm like, right. Now that I know, now that it's official. See, the thing is, it's official now, y'all, because it's documented in the system. You know, the courts, even though a lot of people reject the court process, judicial systems are in place for a reason. And the whole time, I have played by the judicial system. I want it to be. I know a lot of dads don't want to be. I highly recommend dads. Just go ahead and get in the system. I, I know it. But the thing is, the system will now keep a track of everything you're doing because you just never know. And Lord knows that that statement rings true. You just never know. Because remember, in July, something happens. You just So you want to be in the system. Not just for what you never know, but also so it's really documented what you're doing and what you're not doing. Now, if you plan on being a deadbeat dad, you plan on not making payments, then I see why you wouldn't want to, to be part of the system or in the system. But I, I would recommend anyone, go ahead, put yourself on the system. That way you don't have to worry about the mom playing games with you or vice versa if it's the mom. Who's the non-custodial parent? You don't have to worry about the dad playing games with you. Because that sy the system is going to tell you when you get visitation and all that. And so the games are pretty much squashed. And when the other party want to play games and do things wrong, all you got to do is document, keep a record. And at some point, guess what? Change another guard. Right? That's a possibility. Amongst other consequences. So anyway, that court date is over. I call my wife, tell her what happened, you know, so forth. She's back at home over 1,200 miles away. Um, I get my lawyer to uh, drop me back off at my hideaway. <laughs> yes, where I was staying at in, in that time period. I, listen, I, I got, without going too far away, but I got outside of, you know, this, this family, man. I mean, I'm just going to. Listen, for my safety, yeah, I had my lawyer take me back to my well, where my hideaway was at for the time that I was there um, and so forth. Um, and future prove these are dangerous people, okay? Uh, or can be, let's put it that way. And, and, more, and not just physically, but uh, in other ways, many a ways. Cunning. And everything so as time go on of course we communicate and, and at this point COVID COVID is very important here oh wait I gotta go back 
Yeah, I mean, wow. In court, they say that I cannot, that my daughter cannot um, come across state lines to my home until I make six visits. I don't even know how I forgot that, but thank God, bringing it back to my memories. Until I make six visits to Texas, and this is weekend visits, um, Friday to Sunday, I have to do six of them. I have to pay child support. This is over 1,200 miles. I can only do one one a month. And I must let the mom know, I think, with a two-week advance notice um, and so forth. And this, So this is solely, solely on me. Solely. Solely. This is what I got to do. This is what the, the, the person back there in the back that I told you the way that they... That they talk and I told you no surprise, but man, they make it seem like you're nothing, you're nobody. Yes, that's what I got hit with and just took it. I didn't have no rebuttal. I didn't challenge anything except for how long she had custody of uh, my daughter when she said when she made it like she done had her the whole time. That's the only thing I challenged. Everything else, when they spoke it, took it. Spoke it, took it. I was there to make this as easy as possible easy as possible the only thing i wanted was that split um drive for you know when when my daughter would come up you know so i didn't have to do that full drive or track commute and uh, of course the mom wasn't willing to do anything she didn't want to she didn't want to come she didn't want to do anything she wanted to receive everything and do nothing i'm gonna say that again she wanted to receive everything and do nothing. That's very important for when the tables turn. This family was totally okay with having to do nothing but receive everything. So, I took that. Now, the thing is, COVID is happening at this time. This is COVID happening so much that I'm unemployed um, not long after, right? A lot of people out of work. I mean, Pretty much the majority of the world, I mean, not the world, <laughs> well, maybe it was, but the the people in the United States, out of work, right, collecting um, uh, unemployment, uh, being promised these stimulus checks that never roll around, you know, so everybody going through this, right, um, and that's, that's just for a period, um, but here's the thing, child support is being made, and I want to say this now in advance. All of her retroactive pay was made, paid in full, I think by no later than October, but it probably could have been as early as August. Yes. Yes. And her retroactive pay, um, well, you know what? You guys don't have to know how much it was. It wasn't no little amount. <laughs> but it got paid. Remember, though. You know what? I'm not even going to say anything more about that. Her retroactive pay was paid. Um, so at, over this time period, um, no visit is made. There, we're just doing duo, um, D U O duo for anyone who don't know what that is, and that's kind of like Skype. Skype used to be a thing. It's kind of like people with iPhones now who do whatever iPhone people call it. Um, so it's pretty much the same thing. Um, so it's duo. And so, um, and the thing about it, the mom always wanted to try and control who should be duoing, which just me. That, that's always been her thing. Just you. She need to know her dad. She don't need to know um her them, your other kids. She just need to begin to know you. You. I mean, she's all. And you know what? She didn't get to control of that because when I do at the at the minimum, my wife was with me. And then whenever my children chose to be on my my other children, they they came on at different times whenever they made was home, and so forth. So uh, my daughter. She actually got to know the whole family as I got to know her. 
Um, so I did not allow her mom to, to dictate that. But trust me, there's a lot she wanted to control. And so when we would watch the do when we would do the duos, and I, actually I was kind of correct when I said watch. So let me just listen. Let me be transparent. There's times where we watch the duo session because uh, uh, my daughter wasn't. She didn't have any control. She had no 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 structure. There was no management. We would watch her run all over the couch, eating food all over the couch. I know a lot of people say that's what kids do. There was no structure. She riding the bike through the house. I mean, she's just doing whatever. There's ain't no structure. So we would watch her sometime because she wouldn't come talk to us on the thing. And the thing is, she knew some of what she was doing because there was times where she would hang up in our face. And she would, as she's hanging up, you can see her laughing about it. And there was, and, and this is, there was no structure, no respect. This was just a loose child. A mom who sat on the couch, threw the TV on, and boy, oh boy, when I say, ooh, <laughs> threw the TV on, man, it, whew, anyway, let me just stay here, and there's times where my daughter would come on, and we try to understand what she's saying when she's talking, um, but then there came a point over this time where I wanted to try to establish some structure, teaching her the very basics of what I grew up on. And, I, and I'm going to emphasize that again, what I grew up on, what I raised my other three children on. It doesn't matter that parents today don't agree with this. That doesn't matter to me. I'm not raising my children off of the world census or consensus. So I tried to teach her, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. That's the, that's, that's the gist of it right there. And her mom, boy, oh, boy. Oh, no. She wasn't having it. You know, <laughs> she actually, it didn't take long where, because at first, you know, I could duo anytime I asked for a duo to where the mom just put me on a Saturday. Saturday was my day. The rest of the time. Listen, so whatever mom had going on, listen, her life is too busy. That's very important for when the tables turn. But mom's life is so busy that she made it clear Saturday was my duo day. Okay? All right. All right. So there was no more duoing whenever I wanted to duo. So I just took it. Okay. Um, and then even that Saturday got taken away at times one because i we wouldn't just play with the child when 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 i'm trying to establish some structure with the child uh -uh, all she want to do is play nobody got time for you know that, now this is how you know the mom nobody got time for that and, and she you, you and so that saturday that following saturday it got taken away right it is what it is. What, what can you do about it? Nothing. Because custodial parents can be very, very, until the, until, the, until the tables turn, they're very cocky, arrogant, very, just very everything, right? When, because they don't know what the other shoe feel like. But I thank God the shoe switch feet in the future and it's amazing what all came out the woodworks when the shoe switched feet but we're not there yet so dealing with the mom with a lot um just getting to know um my daughter via duo um I visit her one time before the court date. I don't know if I've mentioned that before in a previous video. I don't know. But me and my wife went down there actually uh, to Texas. And we met uh, my daughter at a um, Sam's Club. Um, and of course my wife, she did a video. I didn't know she was going to do a video. So she, we actually got that video somewhere still. Uh, you know, spending a little time right there in Sam's Club. Um, and even that day, all these things are relevant. Even that day with the way the child was running around 
in Sam's Club with no order. Um, a lot of I know a lot of you all feel like this is just what kids do, but I, I didn't grow up on this type of um, behavior with with children. Children, um, you know, new standards, and there are standards, and you don't just run around wild and loose in public and act in any type of way. Um, I, I didn't grow up on that, and so I'm not gonna succumb to that. Um, yeah, I haven't, and I still haven't to this day. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> but anyway, um, fast forward and back up. So we we just going over the course of the time period of you know just making my payments, um, dealing with COVID. Um, during that time, my family and I, we all, except for, oh wait, wait, that's later on. I'm sorry. Um, wait, was wait that COVID was before or after she got? I mean, as far as catching it, I can't get an answer from my wife right now. I can't remember if we caught COVID. Before she got here or after, I, I can't remember. But anyway, yeah, yeah. When we got sick with COVID, after she got here. Okay, okay. I'm just, I'm just. Okay, that's all. That's all I wanted to know. Get, get, gotcha, gotcha. I'm with you. COVID was going on for quite a while. Okay. Um. So. Um. At some point in July, and if I forgot anything between now and then, just for you guys to have a picture painted, uh, as it comes to me, I'll probably bring it up in the next video, but now we about to start diving into what you could say a new chapter after I give this ending. In July, out of nowhere, and when I say out of nowhere, it's just a regular day around here, okay, <laughs> I get a phone call. And it's a CPS lady out of Texas. And I'm just listening to her. Uh, are you the father of, and I'm not going to say my daughter's name. Yes. Um, she don't really come out and tell me what's going on right away. But, and I don't remember that full conversation, but she wound up telling me, mom is in jail. Yes. Mom is in jail. And she want to know, um, you know, I guess what I, what I want to do. And this was a Friday, I think. And so my thought, I'm, I'm just telling you guys, my thought was mom is in jail, but she'll be out. I'm just, I'm just telling you. So it was no need for, like, I didn't go react to the news like, oh, let me, let me go get my daughter. Let me, no, no, no. It was, okay, mom is in jail, but this mom, it, it, it got to be something just, just, just not, something that's nothing, right? Because they come off as perfect, flawless, don't do no wrong. So, I mean, I'm being free. So, as the lady telling me, yeah, I'm the dad. Thank you for letting me know. I'm just more like, man, that did explain why I hadn't been able to get through, though. <laughs> <laughs> to do my um my Saturday duo that did explain that and this is I'm gonna let you guys know now this is not the night where mom got arrested this is about eight days later because the family never told me oh no I, they cold they calculated they never told me and had, remember I said being part of the system, the CPS let, lady let me know because I am on record, she ha, she was obligated to reach out to the dad. Now imagine if I wasn't in the system. You know what would have happened? I just would have never known uh, unless I, you know, I don't, I don't know, I did something where I, where I was like, wait, maybe something happened to the kid, right? Because or because I haven't been able to get through but this family wasn't, wasn't going to let, let no information be known about what was going on. No, sir. No, sir. So because I was in the system, um, CPS, and obviously, if I'm saying CPS, because CPS just don't show up because of somebody go to jail. Correct. Somebody's, you, somebody's listening and you're hearing something going on with CPS. 
is making contact with the dad because why else would they be part of this? But I'm not thinking on that level. I'm I'm serious. I'm I mean I'm just I'm I'm just okay. Mom went to jail. Mama be out. She'll be back home with the child. That's that's just where I'm at. So over the weekend, me and my wife talking about it. You know, I'm I'm sure about that for sure. When Monday roll around, I think I talked to the CPS lady again, and I think it was a Tuesday. I could be off, but I wind up saying, "Let me just ask you this, ma'am. Can I come and get my daughter or not?" And now I want to let you guys know this. I want to I want to just give you this now. At this time, I find out that mom, um, it was said that she had hit the child with a stick. This is, okay. We just come, just put that out, okay. And this was, on, this was one of the things, so abuse to a child or something like that. I don't know how they exactly wrote it up. But this was, before you are indicted in Texas, you know, police come out and they still will lock you up for whatever reason. But that an indictment has to happen. So the charges was um, someone had called the police because mom had hit the child with a stick. And um, that, that, was, that, that, yeah, that was the gist of it. Um, I would get into more detail of what happened that night since I know more of what happened that night. But not in this video. Um, that's why mom got... Um, the police was called out and mom was arrested at this time I'm going to let you guys know there was my daughter with mom and her newborn baby who was probably no more probably no more than she only thinks she was one yet actually because I do know today that that child's birthday is in August and so that child wasn't even one yet um so that's why the police was called. Mom was um, taken to jail. And mom wound up doing something that got her an extended stay. Which I won't talk about in this video. The next video we go in on that. But that's where we at. And I believe that Monday or that Tuesday. I say we was at Tuesday. It could have been that Monday. The point is. As I, as I knew more of why mom was locked up. I'm thinking okay. And. Her bond was $500,000 for this incident. And y'all, later on, I didn't at the time I didn't know, but later on, I started looking into people's bonds dealing with children. And I ain't seen nobody else, and that is like, man, I don't I don't change my whole tone, right? I haven't seen nobody else with that type of a bond. Everybody else's bonds are I mean, low twenty five thousand dollars. I mean, I mean, I mean, only I mean, just low compared to that. Somebody probably like twenty five thousand dollars. That's still a lot compared to five hundred. Her bond was at five hundred thousand dollars. I wound up asking that CPS lady, "Can I just come and get my daughter?" And she told me yes. Then I told the CPS lady about the um um stipulations about the six visits that I had to do that the court had said and the CPS lady let me know that this was special circumstance and that they had the authority to to grant me my daughter um, because I'm the next parent up and okay and I'm not even gonna go into up y'all that's enough for this one right here um man man wow Wow, I didn't see that coming. My wife didn't see that coming. But you know who knew this was coming? And this is why I would tell anybody. Let people talk about you with your past. Let them judge you, misjudge you. Say that because you did this. You the worst, you the scum. But when you let God change your heart and make you a new person, never mind what people say you used to be. Tell me to look at you today and tell me what I am today. And that's where we at. Never mind what I used to be. I own that. Who am I today though? 